Hey guys, welcome to Art Tip 40, and we are at the 40th Art Tip, and I wanted to focus on a package that I've actually built, uh, and it's an ecosystem of forecasting libraries, and I'm going to teach you how to use it. It's called Model Time, and we're going to introduce you to it. It's going to be a gentle introduction, and we're going to learn it over the course of about 10 minutes. And uh, we're actually going to create several forecasts, three different forecasts. Two of them will be really good, and it'll show you the value of the Model Time ecosystem. So uh, to get started here, what you need to do is if you want the code that we're going over today, uh, just sign up for our Business Science Art Tips newsletter. Uh, there's a link in the video notes, and what that'll do is give you access to our GitHub repo. We'll do a git pull. And once you pull your uh, latest files and folders in, you will have 40 different art tips here, and we'll be focusing on the 40th one, Model Time Forecasting. Just click this and open up this .r file. That's what we're going to be working out of. Okay, and again, what we're going to be doing is making this forecast here. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is load in the libraries. So I'm going to do Control and Enter, and what this does is it loads in model time and the tidy models, which these two work together for modeling time series in R using the latest tools and techniques uh, in machine learning. And uh, then you'll load Tidyverse and TimeTK. TimeTK is another package that I've built. Um, it's for time series data manipulations. And then the Tidyverse is one of our core libraries that we always load in. It comes with, it just prepackages dplyr, ggplot2, and several other libraries that are very important. We're also going to be working with date features. So uh, the Luberdate package is, is uh, one of the fundamental or foundational time series packages. Uh, we'll be using month and weekday functions from that library. All right, next, what we're going to do is we're going to load in the bike sharing daily. It's a time series data set that comes with time TK and it's 731 observations. It's a daily time series. So you can see there's timestamps 0101, 02. And then what we're going to be focusing on is this count. And what that is, is the bike shares, the number of people that are sharing bikes uh, and using bikes in DC during this time period. Um, okay, so we're just going to select the DTE uh, and count columns and that's going to be stored as a data frame called data so we'll just take a quick look at data it should just be two columns and here it is a table 731 by 2 with just the date and the count uh, we can get a quick plot of it using this function from plot time series uh, and the x-axis is going to be dte day the count is going to be the y-axis and we can get a clear picture of how this time series works. We see that over the year, there's some sort of seasonality, but there's also an increasing trend. So we wanna use some time series forecasting tools to be able to forecast what's gonna happen over the next three months. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna split into a training and testing set. And this is what time series splits does. This What this will do is create a splits, uh, which object, which breaks it up temporally meaning using the last three months of the time series. And we can visualize that with this, these next few lines of code. All we're doing is um, extracting out the time series cross validation plan and then visualizing it with DTE day and count. And we can see that there's a training and testing set. The blue region is going to be our training period. The red region is going to be our testing period. And this is what we're going to assess the model performance with. Okay, once we have that, we're ready to start forecasting. So if you're following along in the outline, uh, we're right now here, uh, we're going to forecast with profit. Um, Auto Arima is going to be our first one. So that should show up here. Um, and uh, this is how it works. Uh, basically, model time comes with an, auto, an Arima rig, rig function. And this allows us to specify a model. We're going to set the engine to Auto Arima. And what this does is it connects up to the forecast library for um, using the auto arima function and then we're going to fit that uh, and it's going to be count as a function of the dte day so uh, once we fit that model it creates a model for us now this may seem like a lot of work but this is actually uh, very concise and it's able to be and it's consistent which means we're able to kind of do the same thing when we move on to our next modeling approach so uh, again we're going to work on a new model now profit but the approach is, is basically the same thing we first create the um, the profit regression specification uh, here i'm passing an argu argument telling it to look at the seasonal the seasonality yearly uh, I'm going to set the engine to profit 
and this that connects it up to the profit library for this regression model um, and then i'm going to fit that model so when i run all of this it creates a profit model for me um, and the nice thing is is that it would take you a lot of time if you're working in the forecast library and the profit library because they each take their data in the same in different ways so this makes everything super consistent and concise okay um, and then the third thing, so now we'll even try some machine learning. So we're going to do what's called a GLM um, and it's from the GLM net library. So we're going to set up a specification for a linear regression and this, and we're going to uh, uh, supply a parameter called penalty, which is penalized regression. And then we're going to set the engine to GLM net, which is uh, for the, um, for, for the elastic net penalty penalized regression. We're going to fit it and here I'm going to expand on our kind of formula process. So in the fit, it takes a formula and I'm going to specify count as a function of the weekday with it labeled equal to true. I'm going to add in a month feature, uh, which is going to be uh, just the month, whether or not it's January, February and so on. And then I'm also going to add in a trend feature. So I'm going to convert that date to a number using the as numeric function. So when I run this, we get another model and it's basically the same process. So now we have three models already um, and it's all the same consistent process. And now here's where model time really takes over. So now we can start uh, to first organize. So we're going to create a model time table um, and we just use the model time table function. So if I run this control enter, we now have a model table which stores each of our three different models here. And it also gives them a description and an ID feature. So it's just basically for organizing all three of our models, we're then going to calibrate them. So what calibration does is it assesses the um, residuals on the testing set. So you see here, we have the testing set. So you're going to see two new columns that get added to our model timetable. Um, we have a tibble here of 90 by four, and this is calibration data. So it's basically looking at that test data set which is this red region here, which is, if we see here, it's 90 um, observations. So we're actually storing the residuals in here and it's calculating the actual versus the prediction and, and just storing those for each of our models. And this is what allows us to then move on and uh, collect the accuracy. So we can very quickly get the model time accuracy and these are different measures of accuracy here. So mean absolute error is a very popular one. We can see Arima is, is performing the worst. Uh, profit looks like it's performing the best and GLM that's performing right around where profit's at. Um, we can see that uh, from an R squared, which measures variability, uh, that it looks like profit is, is doing one of the best. Um, so profit is, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty strong model in this instance. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is visualize, and this is always a good idea. So we can use another function called model time forecast, and we're going to provide the testing splits. And then we're also going to uh, use the actual data to overlay or to underlay. Um, and I'll show you what this does. Uh, when we take the output of model time forecast and run it through plot model time forecast, we get an interactive plot and we can more visually be able to see what's going on with the specific models. So we can see here that Arima doesn't look like it's doing very well. It's getting the overall trend, but it's not picking up um, the seasonality, the yearly seasonality. Uh, conversely, the profit and GLMnet both seem to be getting the yearly seasonality correct. So if I take this one off, I can actually zoom in and take a closer look at, at these two models and see what they look like. Okay. All right, the next thing that we can do is now that we understand a little bit more about our models, we can now forecast the future. So we can take that same calibration data and the only major difference here is we're refitting. So when we refit, that actually retrains all three of these models on the full data set. So before they were just trained on the training portion, which ends here. Now we're gonna train it on the full data set and then we're gonna forecast it for the next three months. So uh, we do that. And then we can plot our model time forecast. And here's the final forecast. Again, we're going to take off the Arima model because that one didn't do so hot. And this is what the profit and GLM net both look like. Okay. And in under 10 minutes, we have just successfully given you your first introduction to model time. There's a lot more to it. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, these models specifically, there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, there's things that we can do. So uh, there's feature engineering with the recipes library. 
um, this is a big area where we can begin to add in things like lags, things like tr uh, additional trend features for your series and more um, in the recipes library. I teach that in my time series 203 course, and I'll talk more about that here in a second. There's also machine learning algorithms. So uh, we've got more algorithms that we can use than just what we've showcased here. We've showcased auto arima profit in, in the GLM, but there's things like XG boost. There's things like um, random forests. There's even more uh, hot, uh, specialized models like Glue on TS. So this model time ecosystem is a growing ecosystem. And you can imagine that we're adding more and more sophistication to it. Uh, two libraries I want to point to model time H2O and Glue on TS. So I teach all of these in my high performance time series course. Uh, if you're interested in that, I have a link here and it's also in the chat. Definitely check those out. These will help you do forecasting at scale uh, with many, many time series. Uh, and it's uh, basically all about developing a high performance forecasting system. So check it out if you're interested. Links in the video notes. All right. I'll see you next time.